Hey there, welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about everything that happened in October here in the Ocean City real estate market. It has been a wild ride. The Fed has made some interesting moves and some interesting statements, and I want to fill you in on everything that has happened so you know exactly what is going on. So without further ado, again, if this is your first one of these, we tend to cover what happened in the past, where we are now, and then end with projections. If this is not your first time, hopefully you've subscribed by now. If you haven't, make sure you hit subscribe down below. I'm putting out content on the Ocean City real estate market every single week, sometimes multiple times a week. And you want to be the first to know what's going on in this changing market so you can get an edge. So with that out of the way, where we've come from has been a very interesting place, right? We're not going to dive into the deep history that we have done in the past, but mortgage rates are up again, up to seven and a quarter, really, um, in some places even higher. And that is unlikely to change. I'll dive into that a little bit later. But inventory, we saw a spike in the middle of October, we ended up up above 300 total properties, which is where we were a year ago. So year over year, we would have been flat. But really what it did was went way down and came way back up. We had a strong second half of the month of October um, with more properties going under contract and less listings hitting the market. We had in the first half that resulted in us ending at 291. Still 5% increase right uh, from that should say September, but I have the flu, so I screwed up. <laughs> so, um, low days on market though um, started to increase and you're going to see some interesting things here in the slides uh, and I'm going to talk about it. But there have been some things that have surprised me, uh, specifically with what has not happened yet. Now, prices are stable for condos. They're still 9% year over year. Same exact amount last month, about a half a percentage difference, but it rounds, so still at nine. Um, but again, in what's coming, I'm seeing a sign of declines. Not massive, not substantial. A lot of sellers are still holding the line, simply opting to take their homes off the market or just keep it through the winter and see what happens. Um, but in terms of single family homes, they're still increasing. That's a jump up from 39% year over year last month to 46% year over year. And it's a little bit skewed here. So higher priced homes are still selling. Um, really anything in the million range goes still pretty quickly, uh, but homes in the 3 million range, two and a half, some are going, um, I wouldn't say quickly anymore, but they're still selling after a reasonable period of time back to how things used to be. So what we see here and what I didn't think we would be seeing here, and I know my head's in the way a little bit, tip myself out of the way. Um, I thought that we were going to end in October well below what we had ended at in the past um, outside of every month, but April of 2020, aka COVID month. Um, we actually ended up with an increase over the amount of homes going under contract in July and August, a decrease from September, which is totally normal. But this is actually strong. This is stronger than I thought it would be. That bodes well for the future and what closings we should be expecting. Closed homes are about flat. There we go again, right? For the last few months, still trending downward from where we were in the spring when rates were much lower, about half of what they are now. Um, and I would expect that trajectory, again, to align pretty closely with pending. So if that's staying roughly flat, these closings should stay roughly flat. We're still looking at 40-odd properties closing a month. That is well below the pace we were at in the past, but it's still it's still sustainable and strong. Now, here's what I want to talk about that is catching me off guard, right? So months of inventory covers how quickly, if no more homes were to hit the market, how quickly what we do have would sell, right? Assuming that people price them accordingly in order to sell. Six months is stable and average. We are almost at eight months of inventory, which should mean this is a buyer's market. Now, obviously, buyers have had a lot more leverage um, over the past few months, not as many multiple offer situations. But given where rates are, I thought that things would have slowed down more than they have, right? And we're going to see here in a minute, right? Prices took a huge jump up. Now, when we're looking at a sample size of 10, 11, 12 properties, it does not take much to skew this. I do use the median. Um, so it should be somewhat uh, stabilized and neutralized, but still that was a substantial jump. So even if it is skewed a little on the high side, it's still an increase. Um, and this does not appear at this juncture to show any signs of slowing down. Now, what is confusing, and I want to provide some context here, right? A lot of these homes that are going are these huge single family homes in the gardens, a lot of the times new construction, which tends to be higher priced anyway. So if you have or are pursuing a single family home that is what I will just call a more normal run-of-the-mill type of home here, 
I don't think that this chart will reflect what you should expect price-wise on those lower end homes. As long as those are priced well around a million, million and a quarter, they're still going um, quickly, like I mentioned before. But this surprises me, right? So again, once we see this flip to a buyer's market, usually things start to level out. This month, maybe it's an outlier. We'll have to track it going forward, but I just didn't see the change that I expect to hear. Now, here again is another indicator days on market and single family is starting to go back up. Whereas what you'll see in the condos, that's not the same situation. So again, we have some pressure um, and some uh, red flags, I'll say, uh, white flags if you want, showing that prices should be slowing down here in the single family world. But again, the sample size is so small that we may not see it come through as strong as we would in other markets. Now, as for condos and townhomes, again, still an increase in the months of inventory, but we're still below four, which means it's still a seller's market. Um, there are a lot of condos still going under contract. There seems to still be an appetite for that. And the prices have leveled out to a degree. Again, 9% single digit year over year versus almost 50% year over year for single families. Um, but this is not showing signs of increased acceleration like we saw with single families. I would expect this continues to move towards the average of six months, but honestly, there's a chance that we might not get there. It's going to be very telling what happens in the coming months um, as for how market as a whole starts to shift. And again, prices have slowed down. They have not gone down. We had a blip or two here um, in the early summer, but they're still increasing. And this is median. This is off of a larger sample size. So this I, I feel a little bit better about um, that this is stable. Um, I'll talk about what I expect again here at the end. But again, counter to what you saw on the, uh, I can't get my camera right, uh, what we saw in the single family, the ASL market is actually still staying very low with condos. So again, it's kind of the tale of two different markets. Um, and it's a little backwards to what I thought it would be in reality, right? So we have days on market still staying very low for condos, but prices have slowed down. Whereas days on market and months of inventory are up on singles, but prices are increasing. Something's got to give there, um, unless the fundamentals are so skewed and out of whack that they're never coming back to earth, um, in which case we'll be having a very different conversation in the coming months. But that said, where the heck are we going? So I'm going to talk about the Fed meeting here for a second before I dive into this. So the meeting earlier this week, the Fed was very, very what people are calling hawkish, right? There's a lot of talk, and a lot of hope in the investor world on Wall Street. They're going to pivot. They're going to stop with these rate increases. They're going to bring interest rates, the prime rate back down. It has to, right? It would be too painful to do anything otherwise to stick with this plan. Jerome Powell was very clear. They're sticking with the dang plan. Um, they had another 75 point increase in November. They're expecting something similar again in December. And from lenders that I've talked to, they're really not expecting any form of relief on that front until probably late 2023 um, in terms of a true pivot where they may be decreasing rates. But again, that's pure speculation. There is no crystal ball. Nobody knows what the heck's going to happen, but I trust the experts um, when I can. So what does that all mean? That just means that it's going to be harder to buy, right? It's going to put more pressure on sellers if they want to sell. They're either going to be fishing with you know a little dinky worm and hoping the big fish comes and finds it or they're going to have to add a few more by reducing the price, make their bait more appealing um, in order to sell their property if they really want to. But again, I've hammered this time and time again. How many people don't need to sell just would for a certain price? A lot. How many people would love to upgrade but don't want to go from a 2.5%, 3% interest rate on their mortgage up to 7 7.5%? A, a lot. So where is all the inventory going to come from? Is it going to be distressed? That's going to be a hard thing to foresee here, and I certainly don't see that happening. So again, I, I don't think we're going to see any huge changes here um, quickly, but mortgage rate wise, we're at seven. We crossed that threshold like I thought we would. I think we're going to stay there. There's even a chance that they could continue going up if the Fed actually does what they say they're going to do and continue to increase the prime rate. Um, when inflation gets under control, and I've talked about this on past videos, Fed uses lagging indicators, right? backwards looking data that doesn't really show how things are now. And the indicators they use for inflation are backward looking or lagging indicators. So in their eyes, inflation has not come under control yet, has shown no signs of it. Um, I've seen arguments counter to that all over the place. Um, but ultimately, I don't foresee things changing to a more favorable environment for another year or two. Um, so rates are going to stay high. Now for inventory, right? I'm not going to read you every word here, but in general, 
homes that were priced well sold quickly. We did have an increase. Again, like I mentioned before, we actually peaked in mid-October and started our way back down. So does that mean we are going to see a slow decline in our inventory? It's possible. That is normally what happens this time of year. But with elections coming up with so many potential curveballs coming, I don't want to uh, plant my flag one place or the other. I don't think we're going to see a massive increase, which honestly, that's what's needed for any form of meaningful price decreases to happen. And by meaningful, I mean 10 plus percent. Um, and I just don't see that happening in the near future quickly, right? There's no cliff that we're going to fall off of. Do I think that things are going to start to slow their way down and you know, allow you, the buyer, to find some value or you, the seller, to potentially go up against some struggles, right, that we haven't seen in years in terms of having to move and sell and market your home? It's entirely possible. So again, like I mentioned in that last little sentence there, if inventory does continue to increase, sellers are going to face a decision, right? Do they want to sell or do they want to keep it? And there's no wrong choice. Um, again, when I work with sellers, the first conversation I always have is how can you keep this? Can you turn it into a rental? Can you do fractional ownership? Is there anything that would allow you to keep this generational asset that you have here in Ocean City? That is a conversation for another day. If you are thinking about going down that road, please reach out to me. I'd love to walk you through the different options. Again, I pride myself. I think I've talked to more people out of selling their house than I have actually helped to sell their house. Um, and that's always my goal, right? I don't want to see anybody leave the island because I believe so strongly in owning real estate here. Now, again, for prices, the single family jump, I've already hit on that enough. Um, but I really think that we should start to see things trickle down in the coming months. Um, if you hear some dogs in the background, that's the two of them that I have, and they don't know when to stop from time to time. But um, Prices are where they are. They're going to keep creeping up for the time being. But again, I think we are really right at the top of that peak and we should start to see some opportunities coming. Um, and again, anecdotally, there are a handful of properties that I'm aware of that were priced at a certain point, went under contract quickly, but those prices that they went under contract at were 10, 15% sometimes under what that asking price was. The sellers who listed high, right? Normal for what 2021 market was, but high compared to where we are now. They're smart. They're getting ahead of the curve. They are being appealing to the buyers, which is what you need to do if you really want to succeed in this market. So they're going quickly. There are opportunities. If you see a property that you're interested in and you're looking to buy, but it's just a little higher than you think it's worth or are comfortable or able to spend, let's have a conversation because again, in this environment, in this market, poking and prodding and presenting a strong, reasonable offer backed up with some logic wins more often than not. So don't let the sticker price scare you. There may be room to improve that. Days on market again, single family, I think that they're going to keep creeping up um, as that inventory goes up. Condo inventory is still creeping up slowly, much more slowly than singles. Um, but those days on market, I would think, would start to creep up a day or two at a time going forward. So that out of the way, if you have any questions, I'm here for you. Just reach out to me any of the ways you see here. Or uh, feel free to drop a comment right in the comments or a question in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. So thanks for hanging out with me as always. I hopefully will be back with one to two videos to make up for my lack of presence here due to the flu next week. So stick around. Stay tuned. I'll see you on the next one.